All right, everybody. So we are <coughs> finally ready to start here. Um, again, welcome to TWC podcast. I have my good friend from Germany, Markus Neutz, again. Um, I missed you in January because I had to go to Bulgaria while you were here, but here we are finally get to talk, Markus. Um, um, that the reason, like I, I sent you a message, I'm like, man, what's going on, FMBB? The judging all around, not just FMBB. Then the competitors not being happy, as always not being happy, sometimes where it makes sense not to be happy, and sometimes clearly like you, you don't understand the rules and you are giving opinion on something that you really don't understand what you're giving opinion on. Um, but it's a, yeah. Um, how much were you able to see? That was another unfortunate thing that, you know, with all the, the situations with working dog and, and I was not able honestly to see much of the, the first, the championship just because I had and seminar here and and I was hoping just like it's normal that there will be some some ways to replay and watch them but unfortunately that at least for now it's not happening maybe they can pull them back um how much were you able to see did you see any of that competition I just you know I just saw the different posts in Facebook or short videos and I did not for the live stream because you know for me it was not Worthful, I think, because I have to work, and uh, yeah, it's it's a shame, you know, that that I mean that that like we have this big platform working dog, and it's a shame that clubs fight against this platform. Right? You know, I I mean I think it's it's for sure it's the commercial stuff we we have to pay for it, which is good for me because I like it, but but. I think there is like a little war sometimes between the clubs and this working dog company. And, you know, we have no choice than working dog. That's for sure. You know, there is nothing else. So I did not watch. Yeah. Sorry about the, the interruption. Uh, what about the, the, I mean, I, I've heard things, in whatever, like, you know, I mean, that's probably where the whole thing started with the Tzatzit golden league and i um i have mixed feelings about this because as good as it is to have more opportunities we get more and more divided instead of finding a way how to make something big to where everybody is there um but what what do you what is your opinion on on the golden league versus world championships versus where, where did that like as for me the, the the biggest is the world championship you know it's it's fci or the different breed world championship i think that's that's still the biggest goal to reach right. what i think and i the idea of the tzatzit is okay i mean on the one side it's you know it's out of this fight between the the dmc the john malino club and and the other people, and so they found, or they get in this club from Helmut Reisel now, and then, you know, then they start with the Tzatzit is very old, you know, it's Tzatzit is a very old FCI program. It's nothing new. It was just not very common in Germany. It was always common in Austria, Switzerland, Czech Republic. Yeah. And yeah. Last year, you know, me and Maria, we, we were there and we showed our dogs. It was a super nice competition, nice stadium. You know, the flavor was almost like like world championship for sure. Right, right. Yeah, and, and there were people and, and it was very festive, like that's for sure. Yes, but also I think also this year, you know, there are, so, you know, there's no qualification. Right. So there are also dogs in the level you 
really don't want to watch all the time or whatever. So it's good, you know, people can go there and have, they have all the nice atmosphere. But yeah, yeah. for me, it's still more, more worthful is the, the world championships, the different world championships. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. I think world championship is it's the ultimate accomplishment and can nothing can nothing can replace it. And on the on the Golden League idea, uh, yes, there is the anybody can enter, I guess, depending how, how soon you enter. And so the I guess the good side is if you're not experienced and you you don't have this super score and super dog, you still get the opportunity to mingle and compete with some high, high level competitors, which is very inspiring to a lot of people. Yes, for sure, for sure. I mean, people loved it, you know, the handlers loved it. And, you know, that's that's for sure. And, and the Golden League system, I don't right. know. Right now, for me, it's a problem. But, you know, I talked to Matthias about this already last year, you know, so now the first one is in the east part of Germany and the two other ones are all in Eastern Europe, you know, all the Golden League competition. So the one is in Czech Republic, the other one is in Poland. And so, you know, it's not worthful, like for a guy from Italy, he will not drive two or three times all across Europe to compete. So if but then who knows? There are some crazy dog people, yeah, right? Some crazy <laughs> ones. I think if you want to make or implement the Golden League system, it should be more over Europe. Yeah, like there should be one in Italy, maybe one in France, maybe one in Austria. You know, yeah. so there it's and and then we will see if this happens. I know right now that. People from Italy, some of my friends from Italy, they think about organize uh, Tzatzit, Golden League Tzatzit in Italy. But yeah, it's not so easy because on the one side we have, you know, the entry in Italy and and then on the other side they have the Tzatzit. Yes, we will see. Yeah, yeah. And but I I know what you mean when when you said like you the the huge gap or difference between the quality of performances in them, you know, because you will have, you will have some high, high level, and then you have a lot of people again that, um, you know, they, they clearly are, are very much a, a big distance in, in their uh, abilities as a trainer and understanding. And, and it's really like this, it's an interesting one. I don't like the good side again. It's yes, if you're a, a new person going into the sport and you get immediately opportunity to feel like you're part of this big thing and, and you get the experience to go head to toe with, with like the best of the best. It's amazing experience. Um, but then watching you know so many dogs and and you know those performances are like almost okay there, there is not much for me to watch there right um you kind of know that's gonna be like 262 score overall at the end um so i don't know what's the solution to that but my my thing is no matter how many more our venues, we figure it out, like what to have, but trying not to diminish the importance of a world championship because it, I, I don't think it will ever work anyway. Uh, world championships going to be world championship. I think they also make mistake like FMBB. Nobody's perfect, right? Everybody's. I mean, there is this human factor that, that we all are humans. But with FMBB right now, I feel that 
and this has been happening in the last few years, opening the competition to the reserves. And now you have a team of like, all of a sudden, not even two reserves, there is like a nine people team. I'm like, okay, what happened? How, how that gets to be worked out? And do we need to get more entries or do we, or is it better actually to keep the quality to where you also allow the judges to have a, a, a crisper brain and, and, you know, I don't know. What, what do you think about the, the reserves at the FMBB? Again, I mean, it's a good thing for the reserve because it's super inspiring, super motivating, but at the same time, there is some give and take, right? Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's, for me, it's not the problem of the reserves in IGP. For me, the FMBB is a problem because, you know, I mean, I like the world championships and I like the FMBB in the old days, you know, it was just IGP, you know? Right. And that's why I, I don't know if you see my t-shirt. Oh. Uh, what is it? Nine, Not really. <laughs> 1994, the first world championship. First world championship, yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's I, had to, <laughs> I had to dig deep to find that shirt somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, the problem for me with the FMBB or with the Malinois world compared to the German Trepots, you know, I mean, even on the WSV world champion, Ship, there are, yeah, you see dogs, you know, they are not good enough for world championship. You right, know? right, right. But the community in the German Shepherds is, is much bigger. And, and, and at the FNBB, it's the same. There are dogs. They are, they have not the quality of training. They have not the quality of dogs for the world championship. No. From different countries, you know exactly, okay, this happens. But the interesting thing about it, so you see all the different nations, you know, that's, that's maybe the topic. Yeah. But, but what I think now, like, I'm not sure if it's true, but now that people told me this was more than thousand dogs at the FMBB, you know, with yeah. all these different, yeah, for all events. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Bike wearing and this, this year they had herding and rescue, yes. search and rescue and this, and for me, this destroys, you know, this world championship. It, yes. For me, it's okay. We can make, you know, world championship IGP. We can make a world championship Mondial. We can make a world championship obedience. But all together is for me too much. You know? Yeah, I think many, many, uh, me, me included, I, I am 100% on your side on this. I think... Um, I think it was cool to see when they first did it one time and maybe two times, but by then you have to realize that we, we as, as much as we appreciate the breed and all the dog sports, when we go to world championship, we have a very fixated mind why we are there. So just because some, even, even as a spectator to walk around one time to see two minutes of Mondio and two minutes of agility and then go back to watch whatever sport you are, it is not worth it to, to create so much pressure on a host country. Like we lately, we've been kind of trashing countries, um, and in some, maybe, maybe rightfully so, but at the same time, the, the, as you said, it's not, this is not an easy thing to, to have this huge event. Um, and, and most countries don't want to host it because they realize what's going on and they're not able. And then you have country like Romania, they say, okay, we're going to do it but we don't know what we are doing. 
and and now we have problem and there is really it's a simp this to me it's a very simple solution divide it let's here go back to where we have the igp competition and there is a monitoring competition and anybody that is interested seriously interested like myself i mean right now you know i train a dog for monitoring i train a dog for igp i personally would love to have them split to where i can focus when i go to igp competition to focus on my igp competition and when i go to monitoring competition then it's all monitoring versus that conflict of where do i want to be what do i miss and and it doesn't make sense but there is something probably as far as income for fmbb which i highly doubt because when every time i listen to uh um what do you call it at the meeting uh, their financial status and everything every country and the organization they barely are able to break even and sometimes lose money so i don't think it's a good idea from from so many different angles and i hope they they change it um uh, i mean starting from next year i hope they change it which i don't think they will I mean, you know, it's not a disrespectful meaning, but for me, it's a little bit like a fanboy, you know, world championship, you know. So everybody, oh, I go to the FMBB and I take, you know, if I want to compete in a different sport level, I can compete in this in this sport. But, you know, like, I don't know much about, but for me, like, you know, bike rowing and carnic cross, this is not... There is nothing in common with IGP. Right. You know, I, I can say, okay, obedience. Okay, we have obedience, different style, different part, but obedience is also part of IGP. We have monitoring, you know, there is a combination, maybe agility, but agility is still totally different for me. But, you know, there is no combination between all these different sports. No. And, I don't know, maybe the idea is like the Olympic Games for Malinois also, but yeah, but it's for me, it's too big, you know? Yes. It's too big in the total number. I also think it's too big, you know, just in the IGP numbers. It's, it's yeah. And it's in any, too big. Any, and, and, yeah. It's too the big for the structures, are... maybe too big for the decoys. Yeah. Uh, the same like FCI, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I guess this year there were 180 dogs in the FCI World Championship. That's a lot for one judge. Or yes. two or That's four. Just... And, and yeah, I guess the there is this conflict, right, between what is the World Championship for? Is it to see the top 50 of the world going at it? Or is it to have 150 to where others can say, I was at the world championship? And both have a good, like, like I, can, I can see it from both sides, but I, I personally would rather have 50 or 80 dogs at a the world championship to where when you don't make the 80 dogs you know that you did not make the world championship versus versus somebody making a world championship team then go back home and say hey i was on the world championship team i am a big shot i know what i'm doing and you clearly were just a participant you did not yes it's it's some accomplishment but but you're definitely trying to make it blow it out of proportion to where now you're uh just as good as the top 50 and and the, the difference is so big and it uh so i i lean more to having competitions not so much to okay well let's get more entries let's make it big event uh let's make money off of it no, let's really stay focused on and allow the judges and the helpers to stay 
as you said, like, how do you judge 180 dogs? Like, I mean, I, I cannot judge 30, like hats off to, to any judge that could take that challenge. Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, for sure there are ways, you know, to make it better. I, what I think, you know, like there are countries and they have probably five IGP3 Malinois in the whole country. Right. And so, you know, all five come to the World Championship because that's the only one they have. Right. And what I think, what, what, what I would like, you know, like, you have the different countries, you can make, okay, how many Malinois with IGP titles are there, or how many Malinois trial in this country, and you can make a key out of this. Is it okay? This is, for example, Germany. We are still, I think, the, the, the country with the most IGP trials in the world. So, okay, you have so many trials. Okay, you have this and this, you know, you have this and this members, you have six members, and Czech Republic has six members, and, yes. you know, and maybe you find a solution that there is a minimum. For me, it would be enough, like minimum two or three from each country. And, you know, the more you will you want to send, the more brides you need in your country or the more money you need in your country. This would yeah. make it maybe a little bit smaller and then maybe a little bit more interesting also to watch at the end. Yes, because it could it could be very intense when you know that this is like everybody. I mean, this is really the, the, the best of the best, which world championship should be like. Um, all right. I know, I know, I mean, you and I talk and I know many people know who you are, but before we hit a lot of the, the hot topics, give me just briefly for the people that are not familiar with, with, you like judging and DMC and, and accomplishments now. So just kind of in a, in a nutshell. So, so people understand that there is a, what you say there, there is some value. It's not a, just a keyboard kind of internet fiber. I don't know what the value, but <laughs> you know, that's yeah. So yeah. Okay. My, I'm Marcus from Germany. I'm in this sport since over 40 years now. I had different breeds. I won different nationals with three different breeds. So I won nationals with a Doberman, with a Malinois, and now with a Schnauzer, Giant Schnauzer. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Touching. Uh, I start in the late nineties. I start judging in the at this time in the German Malinois Club, uh, yeah. and re really fast I start judging big competitions. So, but this I don't know if I was so good or it was just because we had so less judges at this time in the German Malinois Club. Mm -hmm. So the the first few years I think I just judged national championships and world championships and maybe one or two club trials at all so no? but i judged a lot i don't know yeah 15 national championships qualification fci awdf and you've done titles. a bunch of exactly exactly yeah. into FM, fmbb world yeah. champion two times yeah. yeah and yeah then i i make a break in judging made a break because out of political reasons, I left the DMC, the German Marina Club. And now, since two years, I'm again an FCI recognized judge, but in the German Pinscher and Schnauzer Club. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, no, then that's, that's exactly kind of what I wanted. Um, and I mean, way back in the time, you were very much instrumental in the DMC as far as the judging. I don't know. I, I thought you you were also the like the director of judges at some point. Yeah, they right? have judged, but you know, we were just four or five, sure. I think, so it's easy to be the director of 
sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But I think in this time we were yeah, instrumental, influential a lot. You know, like Oh, very much so. Yeah. Or even in judging, like, you know, some things like this time frame of obedience. This is in the rule book since whenever, but nobody looked for it, you know, or preparation for the send out. I think this was all what we did in our club first, you know, and also I in Germany, you know, I don't know about other countries, but in Germany, I think we were in front, you know, as judges. And yeah, yeah. at this time, people, some people say we are crazy because we judged very strict, you know, like also in obedience. When, when this change starts from, you know, full pressure, full work to more, more, a little bit more positive, we, we start looking for this very early. Like, you know, is, does the dog look, look happy? You know, is there enough speed? And, and I think we had a lot of influence in, in judging because we were a small club, you know, we were the smallest breeding club in Germany. But we had the most success, you know, like in the VDH, AWF compared to FCI. So we were a big number of good handlers. We won a, we, no, not we, the, 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 um, the handlers from the German Malino Club, they, they won a lot of international titles, national titles. Right. So there was a big influence out of this. No, I mean, everybody needed that and and actually as you said that was a an important moment in history of the evolution of the sport for no question about it um um but yeah there is always the when you stay long enough and it's not just IGP, it's not just dog sport. I think it's anything, it's just humans, you know. But if you stay long enough, some of your friends will become enemies, some of your enemies will become right. friends. That's normal. <laughs> and, and then it's, it's gonna go back and forth. And somehow we, you know, I, I understand, I mean, I'm the same way. We don't need to be all friends. It's not possible and there is no need, but the, all the little splitting, I wish that there is some better way that we can say, well, these are some things that we all care about. And instead of making a little other thing and another club and another something and keep dividing, but I don't know if that's even possible, as I said, we we are all humans and and we all have very strong opinions i mean just because we have the same hobby you know we don't have to be friends <laughs> you know that's that's normal no and and we don't need to train the same no and we don't need to like necessarily each other's performances for this we have rules yes we have the rules the, the rules, rules explain the what we need Right. Do you like, do you feel like I, I will tell you my take and it's, I mean, yes, we're getting into deeper into talking FMBB specifically, but, but just overall judging and the rule book. It seems to me that somehow a lot of the those judges colleges and and gatherings fail to educate judges about what the what what the tendencies are how how the the judging is evolving and 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 what do we need to what do we as a what as a whole IGP community we have decided or have we even decided what do we like so everybody can 
start to adjust their training, you know? You know, right now, all the last two, three, four years, I think we really are at a very difficult point in IGP rules, judging, whatever. So let me maybe go back what I think, you know, it's like, so as a handler, you know, or as handlers, we made a huge evolution the last 30 years. You know, we, I mean, the same like you, we just start, you know, full negative and then we put the positive stuff in. And and so there is a huge evolution in dog training. Yes. And as, as handlers or as a handler, I can get myself educated in so many, many ways. You know, I, I go to seminars, I watch videos, I watch online trainings, whatever, you know. And as a judge, there is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your annual meeting, you have the annual club meeting, the annual FCI meeting, whatever, but there is no really education. Right. You know, so nothing changed. And I think the handlers overtook or passed the judges the last 30 years in knowledge, in their specific partner, you know. So the handlers get better in training, but the judges maybe not get better in judging. That's what I think sometimes. Yeah, and, and but not all judges. That's also the problem. That right. But but if 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 I want to educate me as a judge, you know, I have to be, you know, open. I have to take all my private time and look. Okay, what can I do? So, but what can I really do? I can talk to other people. I can think. You know, I can call somebody and we talk or we meet, whatever. But there is not really a system. You know. That's and, and 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 right now I think. I mean, I I talk about both sides. I'm a judge and I'm a handler, and I don't say I'm a, the best handler, but I don't also say I'm not the best judge. No? Right. I think, and but what I think now, the judges, you know, we pass the or we the handlers pass them, and now they want to get back in the pole position and take the handlers down on their level again. That's what I think right now. You know, when we talk about all this natural and stress, whatever, that's for me, I, you know, I really hate these discussions about this. What is natural? What is natural behavior? Nothing what we do in IGP is natural. Natural tracking is not what we want. Natural walking is not healing, no matter how the healing style looks. No? And, and also about this, you know, stress and these levels. I cannot judge emotions. I can judge behavior. That's what I say, but not emotions. You know, like me, I have my funny faith now, but inside maybe I, I would like to kill the next guy, you know? True. So, True. Yeah. And, I mean, there are instances where you clearly can recognize. Yes. Sure and stress, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. In tracking, for example, in tracking, you can see, but not if a dog just tracks. If there is a mistake, then you see how the right. dog reacts on it, you know? Right. But just because the tail is down, that's not 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 a proof of whatever forced draining or forced tracking or uncomfortable box. No? And there are so many different ways that a dog shows his, his expressions, you know, and, and we cannot value them. That's what I think. But this is now the big discussion since a few years. Oh, this is stress and this is stress. And, and I'm no psychologist, but I know that we all need stress to work. You know, and then they make the this, you know, the the difference between this positive stress and negative stress. And I think the rule book, they at least in the German version, they talk about stress, but they don't talk about the positive stress. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because but now people use also, yeah, they don't care if it's positive or negative. Stress is stress, but I say, okay, without positive stress, we will never have an excellent in protection again. Because that's what I think. So, that, right. And and that's right now this big discussion. I really don't like. I, I really don't want to follow. Uh, and and but there's got to somehow. It's the rule book. The rule book is not clear. Mm. And the, the rule book, even the new one, is not logic. Mm. 
Yeah. And, and, and so there is a lot of room of different interpretations from different things. And that's, I think we have to be careful that we don't, you know, that we don't go back in our level of dog training and whatever. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a super difficult uh, um, to me, you know, because uh, I mean, they, like, like I, I just pull it out here. I'll put it on the screen. Let me see if I can do this. How do I do this? Oh, I know how. Um, I wonder if this is no. There is a man I why is it not letting me share this weird? Um just trying to share something with you. I just read it. That's too stupid that I cannot figure it out. But so like there, there is this thing, a person who trains or does a dog sport, right? It's a, so we are looking with a method of careful training with the goal in mind to achieve the best possible harmony between himself and the dog and to convey to the dog what we want in such a way that the dog understands and and the harmonious relationship between men and and dog you know uh it, it always kind of talks about that cooperation and harmonious relationship and stuff and so there is quite a few different ways just as we say there's thousand roads to rome and I think this is cool because everybody can have some, I think this is how we grow. Like if we all do the same thing, it's not, it's not going to be even interesting. Um, but there is a point where some of the training of IGP <clears throat> becomes, um, I don't know what words to even use. I, I wouldn't say fake, but mechanical, like without a purpose or something. It's like behaviors are happening to, and they look very beautiful, but like the meaning of why the dog is doing it is not there. Like if you take Mondio ring, for example, or any ring sport, any behavior the dog does, there is a, a purpose, a meaning behind why we do this. And, and yeah. I think I know what you mean. And that's what, what I think what we have right now in protection. Protection work is for me, there is, there is no meaning, you know, what the dogs are doing. You know, obedience, right. obedience is for me always a dressage, you know, right. and, and, but in protection, like, for me, one very big thing is the, the the guarding phases, you know. Right. So, fifty percent of the dogs I see they make guarding out of obedience. Yes. yes. And not out of what what I would like natural guarding behavior, you know. So, our working dogs are guarding guard dogs. So. They, they guard usually, they guard the house, they guard the cattle, they guard yes. the roof, and they show behavior. And, 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 and in our protection, that's a lot of technical tricks and, and obedience now. Right. And right. I, as that's... a judge, I accept, you know, because if they fulfill the picture, I, I can accept, but it's not what I like to see. Or well, in my dogs, I would not like to see this. You know, and and that's what I think. And and in in obedience, this technical part, I don't care. It's it's like, like you know, the healing pattern of Bridget, you know, with this extreme. I don't know what is it. 
Lipizzano style. Yeah. 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 With the front legs. The the front legs. Front. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I think um, the guy, uh, the lady from California, she she made the same. The, what's Sarah? Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I and if you see this now, many people think, oh, this is, I don't know. This I don't know. So it must be illegal. Illegal. You know, that's what I think. And then, and it's not illegal. You know, it's not illegal because I'm just too stupid to train it like this. Yes. It's like when I said, okay, you saying bowl, he, he can run faster than me. So he must do something illegal. No, it's just because I'm too fat and too lazy. You know? And and so this is right now in the mind of so many people on the one side in, in protection, they accept a lot of technical training, a lot of circus and yes. and I accept it in obedience. Obedience, you can show whatever you want, you know, as long as as the dog fulfills the the, the, the rule book, and as long you don't see poor pressure in the dog, it's okay for me. Yeah, like like let's just stay in, in protection phase for a moment longer. I I agree. Uh, um, the the distinction the difference between a dog that out and is guarding and guarding to me does not mean just barking continuously but means i'm holding you and i'm prepared to strike at any given moment so the moment we have one out when the dog is okay i'm ready to fight you and then we have another one where the dog is like no i'm not ready to fight you now i'm just barking politely for a toy we have to recognize and and ultimately i think this is not a problem for anybody with the knowledge we have as trainers today but somehow fashion in training because oh this person is doing it that must be the way and then so many people kind of end up doing something that it's that they know it's not the real thing and and but somehow becomes the the new fashion at the moment yeah. cool um yeah so where were we um yeah talking about protection and uh you know, like, sure, you can, you can deviate, you can kind of sidetrack and accomplish a behavior just for the sake of the behavior. But then there is no purpose, there is no meaning behind the behavior, right? And it's easy in protection to, why would you want to change it? Just because somebody decide, okay, this looks cool, or maybe they had a problem with this one dog and that was their solution, whatever the reason. But somehow, amazingly, it becomes a trend. And if you're to the point that if you're not doing this, you feel that you're not going to make the point. This is the, the confusion where I think uh, um, the judges are very much responsible to, to guide the competitors to what we need to look for and train for and prepare for. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, there, you know, there are so many different pictures I can get, like an excellent, you know, I, there are many different pictures in tracking and obedience and in protection. Yes. yes. And yes. I, right now we have the discussion over the two different commands and the different behavior after the out. Yes, it's a trend. A few years ago in Germany, I had the feeling if your dog does not know, you know, two different outs, he's not good enough. No? Right. And, right. Yeah. And, and that's for me, that's a part I don't like at all, you know. As a handler, I don't like at all. As a dog owner, I don't like at all. As a judge, I can live with it, you know, if, if as long as both 
behave of our good. It's from right. my case, you know, but that's not uh, the highest level of protection I want. Huh? Uh, and you see it also when you watch it with open eyes, you see many mistakes in these behaviors. Right. That's another, that's another very important thing to make a note of. It's very different. I mean, it's so different when you as a judge are on the field watching right here. You can see the intention in the eyes. You can see the dog breathing. You can, you can feel the, the level of energy and intensity versus being on the sitting somewhere on the stadium versus watching it on live stream. And, and a lot of times you have the, you know, the, the critics that are watching a video and they're replaying and zooming out and zooming in and, and I do the same. Of course I do the same, but we have to also understand that a judge and a helper and a competitor being on that moment in the field, they see something very different sometimes than what somebody on the stands or on a live stream see. Yeah. Yes, yes. And also, as a judge, you have one chance to see the behavior, you know? And then in the next second, you have to give your grade in your mind. Right. No. And, and, and then maybe, you know, go deeper in judging. Maybe at the end you can you know, evaluate, you know, before you give the point and maybe say, okay, I mean, I have here 95, but this was 96, so I give 96. But, but you know, you see the exercise and you have to, to recognize what, what, what was happening. And then you put it on your trial sheet and you give your grade and your points. Yeah. Yes. And ultimately, like really, ultimately, like I was, uh, um, I don't know how much you followed on social media, the discussions and uh, Arnold Kivago made a, made a long post about the FMBB and then there was a bunch of conversations that started. I invited him to the podcast, but he, he was afraid that his English is not good enough and and he was on vacation, but hopefully I get him so we can talk. Cause I know, I know English is not a problem. We can always figure it out. We're all, uh, but, but he, he had some really good points. And then there were some that I, I'm not sure, like, like for example, could the judging be could the points overall be like, let's say five or 10% higher? And I would say, sure, they can be. But what was more important was, were the judges at least staying consistent in what they were doing? And if the judge stays consistent in a certain trial, for that trial, then I think uh, um, that's more important than are the scores between 90 and 97 or are they between 86 and 93? Sure, they are very low, but at the same time, when I watch performances, I see a lot of dogs that are very mechanical and very stressed. Like they, I, I, like, I don't know how to explain this, but I, I, and I know because I compete, you try to do the best you can with the knowledge that you have. And there is that balance between where do you push the dog too much to get precision to where at that point now the dog is Clearly, uh, you know how you were talking about, yeah, there is some need of stress, but, but then there is a lot of dogs that they have, the trainers have put so much stress 
that the dog is just not comfortable when they perform. And you can feel that when you're on the field walking and watching them, but you cannot feel it when you're on the stands. I mean, that's an obedience call. For a good obedience call, the obedience must be fluent, you know, from beginning to the end. You know, it must be one fluent motion for me. Right. And it's not, it's not 10 exercises one after the other in one all in different styles. It's, you know, it's a fluent thing, you know, like the speed is always good. It's not a super crazy speed, but the dog is always good in speed and he's, he's very comfortable. In what he and there is the, the clarity of what you want me to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, but but that's that's about the FMBB, about Arnold's post and, and Mia posted and, and different people. And you know what we talked at the beginning. I did not follow FMBB because I had no live stream. But uh, what I saw mainly the videos you posted and some. Facebook videos, maybe some YouTube, you know, but overall not much. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, and then people say that the, the points must go higher. So I watched the two obedience from the final from Mark Oli and Yanni. You know, you cannot go higher with points because all the right. obedience and mistakes. I'm pretty sure you can go lower if you want with this both works, you know. So, so, you know, how can you say, okay, we have, we, we need more points. If I give the, Oli's obedience or Yanni's obedience a 96, you know. Right. Just because they're on the finals, right? Yes, but that's, that's not, not, not the IGP. IGP is a rule book and, you know, it's not, the final is not one against the other. It's not like Champions League in soccer, you know, yes. you win and you, or you lose. It's, it's, it's the rule. Yes. And, for me, there is no way to give more points. That, I mean, these were, were the best two dogs. Or people said, okay, the dog on third place, maybe he is better than the dog on first place, whatever that's what they talk. I did not see, you know, but, but you cannot go higher with points because there were clear mistakes. Yes, yes. I mean, Yanni, Yanni loses in the sit out of motion, he loses five from five out of five points. Yes. So I, yes. I cannot give 96. That's, that's not possible. And I mean, gosh, I, I, I mean, Yanni is such a very close friend to me. I know his friends with you. Um, all is, I have highest respects. I talk to him like, I mean, I, as I said, sometimes we are friends, sometimes we are enemies, but ultimately when we stay long enough, we appreciate who we are and Yanni could have won. The reason Yanni didn't win is he missed a seat out of motion two times. He missed it in the championship and he missed it in the, to the point to where, and again, I, I, I mean, I, I, I know how Yanni trains. I know how he feels. I, I know there's like, a insane amount of passion and he's he's a good guy i mean he trained he comes with you and but it can go even like crazier to where if you see the dog not doing the sit the first time and then sit sit and then a down and then again it's almost like the there is something that at least for this trial, is definitely a, a conflict in the dog, and 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 I, I'm gonna say something probably super controversial here, but even to the point where some judge can say, you know, I can DQ the dog because of um, maybe maybe that's too extreme, but. But you know what I'm saying, like they, like when you show one behavior two times with, with like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And then you put the dog on a down, you're, not al you're basically not allowing at that point the judge to, to come to a conclusion, or am I wrong? Yeah, that was <laughs> I don't even know if he, if he said down or half sit, I don't. You know, 
I don't know the. He, the I think he, yeah. yeah, I think he downed them eventually because the dog was uh, uh, not 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 willing to to separate. Yeah, I mean, many years ago we had this discussion if you use commands which are not allowed and described the exercise, they will DQ you, you. But that mm. is too much, mm. you know. That's right. Like, that's also right. stupid stuff. Nobody wants and you know if you if you show your dog in in Bulgarian language, I don't even know what you are talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. exactly yep. a stupid thing. Huh? But I mean for example, like this this exercise in the final, maybe many people do not know, but it's just five points, but it doesn't matter, you know. At the end the dog down. So this is minus two point five. Huh? Then we had at least one additional command, which is minus 1.5 in the rule book, you know. Right. And then we had the steps from the first command to the next command, which is eight, nine steps. It's another mistake. So out of five, there is nothing left. Yes. You know, yeah. you know there is nothing left. Even if he would sit in the second command, there is not much left. And that, that, that's what many people don't know. You know, they just said, oh, he missed the sit. Yeah, he did not miss the sit. He missed the sit, but he missed the first sit. He made a few steps. And then he lay down. So, you know, it's he missed the whole exercise. Yes. 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 And, but, yeah, but the, the, I know that people think there was cheating. Yeah. You know, I cannot tell you about FNB because we should watch like the first 20 dogs in the World Cup and then in the final, then we can talk about what, Correct. what, Correct. what Correct. Correct. Yes. yes. What what I think, okay, in obedience, what we talk many um mistakes on both on both dogs for sure. You know, like like Oli bad exercises like sit down and stand and, and Yanni does no sit then Oli also messed up the, the about turn on the healing. About turn, you know. Um, and, and yeah, like Yanni stalk the sit, and then, you know, like the, the pickups in the dumbbells. Right. You know, are not what we want to see. And then the build up in the front, in the send out. So there were, were mistakes for sure. Yes, yes. And the pickup and the presentation. Uh, you know what I, I, I mean, sorry to interrupt here. Cause keep your thought core. I want you to keep going with this, but I, I almost feel that we are at a point where even though it's finals and we assume, well, everybody should know what the, why we're judging this way. So we're not going to give a critique. We're just going to give the score. I think this is a wrong idea because clearly, clearly we are not ready to just get a score. We need, we need to hear why. Uh, the, uh, maybe we get there. Yeah, but that, that's also one thing because of so many dogs. Timetable. You know, that's also a reason why I don't like so many dogs because you cannot give a critique out of out of time reasons. If there is, if right. we do critique right. with 150 dogs, we need one more day. And uh, yeah, and this is where it gets a little bit unfair towards the judges because. He gives the points, but you don't get to hear why, what he, what the thinking is. And maybe if you were to hear it, then you go back and you read. Maybe you agree or disagree. But but like this, for most people that that don't read the rule book, which is ninety percent of the. I mean, I can guarantee you, and I'm sure you know. Like if you put hundred people that do IGP for 20 years and you ask them to to give you forget about grading exercise but just to give you the points of each exercise they would have no idea what it is they don't know that's that's what I find out many many times when I talk to people you know they talk about points but they don't know right, what, right. <laughs> how the points are dedicated and dedicated whatever you know and then it's like oh you like this person because no no you you clearly don't know 
what the rules and the criteria are. So, so before, before let's talk about you know the two dogs from FMBB. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about much about points because I did not see even the video from Mark Ollis protection. The escape and the rear attack was missing on the final. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that was my my uh, my phone. The Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi fucked up. It was on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so I cannot talk about the points because that's you know the only one thing I saw. No? What, what I think was the problem, you see the two dogs, you know, behind each other, all in obedience, you know, in the same flight. And, but that's not one dog against the other dog, you know. It's one dog in the rule book and the other dog in the rule book. And, and then for sure, when I watch the different training, training of the dogs, and these are two totally different training styles. Yes, which is interesting. Yes, I know Mark Oli, we are good friends since long time. We trained together many, many years. And I know Yanni from, you know, some training we make together when I, when he worked our dogs. And I saw what he is doing. So it's, Yanni is for me right now, so more this modern style of training, you know, with, I call it always the fancy dog training. And Mark Oli is more like, okay, solid in some things. Yeah? And for sure, like people like this fancy style. Huh? And then you watch this dog and this dog, and then you think, okay, this dog was way more fancier and all stuff, so it must be better. Right. Yeah, but then we have to look what, what does the rule book require, you know, in different exercises. Huh? Like we take the protection of Yanni, like the dog is perfect in speed and in gripping behavior. For me, like, in holding, like holding bark and the, the guardings. Huh? And then what he showed in a super nice way is transition. You know? And he showed it on, I think in the one, I think it was after escape, he showed it for three, four, five seconds, you know? And I know many people train transitions because it's, it's an important part now of the rules, but it's not necessary to show it in this way to get full points. Yes. But, you know, when I think, okay, this, I like this picture. So I think, okay, this dog is the better dog, for sure, or better trained dog. No? But it's just because I like the training style more doesn't mean it's the better dog at the points at the end. No? So I really, I really don't know if, you know, if there was something wrong. It, it, it can be, but it cannot be because we, we don't see all our videos. No, we had to watch right. our video to give a credit to the judges or not. That's, that's... Do you, here's a question. Do you think we are, I mean, we're clearly a, a, a different generation. We, when we started to do this, the reasons we were doing it and what we tried to get out of the dog and what we wanted to see out of the dog, 15, 20, 30 years ago was very different than where things are changing now. How, how much do you think um, the younger generations understand that uh, um, more, okay, I'm outing, but I'm ready to fuck you up right now. You, you know what I mean? I think that's there is so much influence over social media in dog training, and and like we said, in, for me, protection a dog should also show natural behavior, which is for me guarding. Guarding and striking is natural for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And striking does not mean the long bite speed. Striking is the last step for me, you know, and, and, but in all the videos, there is, there is so much behavior created and shown that, that the younger generation of, of dog trainers, you know, 
they forget about some natural things. That's what I think. Right. And right. and we see this when we do a seminar so many times, like people come and say, oh, I want to train the two different outs. Okay. Okay. If you want, you can try it. And then he comes with the dog on the field and then the dog does not even bite. Right. You know, right. But but in the mind, okay, I have to to train this because this is what Facebook shows me all the time. Or I need this, like Yanni's speed in a pop, which is phenomenal, you know, the speed. But you know, they forget about the pickup, they forget about the presentation. No. Yes. And, and yes. And, and this is what I think that the, for me the basic stuff is missing a little bit in the mind of people of the. Endless. But this is the, the I mean, that that's an excellent point you're bringing. And I think that's where judging overall fails to 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 guide the trainers where to focus on. Uh, um, Yeah, I mean, speed, but then what's the pickup? Speed, but then what's the presentation? Is it, well, I mean, the presentation of a dumbbell, it's, it's so freaking amazing. Like, hey, I'm giving this to you. No, I'm not ready to exchange something here. It's a, it's a different level of presentation, just as out and I'm ready to get you. Um, but how can judging improve to, to like, like in my opinion, this whole thing right now is because we, we need to come up to, first of all, understanding what the rules are and what we need to accomplish. And educate the judges to be able to to educate the competitors what they need to train for um so complicated and then getting upset you know like i man when god i i mean you and i've been in these competitions for for so fucking long, I, I, I can give you two examples when I should have been the world champion without any doubt. And clearly there is politics, clearly there is human nature. Um, can it be avoided? I don't know. Probably we just, we are humans, just like take, take fucking soccer, Maradona, boom, with the hand of God, right? I mean, I mean, what do, what do you do? Sometimes you bend the rules and they work for you, sometimes they don't. Um, the unfortunate thing is that when it really hurts is when you know that you won and you have put this is another thing, like many, many, many people don't understand the difference between winning a world champion and being in the top five even. Like it, it, there is something special that has to happen, including luck, including all the style stars in the universe. They have to line up for you that moment. Yeah, and when you, I think it's inevitable that um, at some point somebody's gonna favor somebody a little bit. But just like in, in fighting, in martial arts, ultimately, if you focus and you make your performance, you don't count the, well, I made mistakes, but he also made mistakes. No, if you don't make the mistakes or you make less mistakes, no matter how much the judge favors somebody, 
then it becomes a very big problem to, to justify. Then, then it's a problem, right? Um, the four judges or two judges on one judge, what's your take on this? I mean, you know, like, I don't know, since when FMBB with small judges, multiple judges, for sure, 10 years now. Yeah, 2010, I think it started, no? Yeah, something, something. Maybe, or maybe more than 10 years. So now the first year with one judge. But <laughs> after almost all FMBBs, people were talking about cheating and bad judging, you know. So we had four judges, three judges, whatever on the field, and still there was well problems with judging. Yeah. So that's for me yeah. not a solution. I really would prefer, or what I say, one good judge is enough. No? If he's good, you know, if he's good, if he's fair, if he's straight, you know, if he is not easy to manipulate from outside, then it's a good judge. No? And what I could live with, maybe two good judges, and they have to talk all the time each other, and they find a common result at the end. Mm. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's maybe for me the most fair system. You know, that's so crazy. Field, and they have ah. to talk. So maybe the points will go very low because we both together on the field, I see mistakes you don't see. Yes. And you see mistakes I didn't see, you know, so maybe. The, come together. The out, yes. We have to come together and find a solution. And there is for me no room for cheating, yeah. you know, because if you want to, if I want to cheat and you don't want, you will not follow me. Right. Yeah, I, it's a man, I like ever since we started to have more judges, I've been taking one side or the other and I, 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 even today, I don't think I have a clear idea of what I would rather have. What you're saying does make a lot of sense. Um, like take this last world championship, for example. You have, of course, the four judges come together and if I'm one of them, I'll be curious what you got, what you got. But at the same time, I think when you're of that caliber of judge and all of them are, you know, they've been, it's not their first rodeo. So I don't think any of those judges, because of their, e even because of their ego, it's like, no, these are my points. I'm curious what your points are, but I'm not going to change my what I understand because of you. Like, I don't think this is happening, but many people believe that, oh, oh, you're giving that many points, so I'm not good enough, so I'm gonna match your points. I don't think that's happening. Do you? I don't know. Maybe in some times, I don't know. Uh, the problem is maybe that, you know, if you, with, we take the two judges or three judges, and you are the one who is always away from the others. You know, mm. maybe too high, maybe too low. Maybe you will start thinking about, you know. And what am I doing? Lose, yeah, and then you will lose your straight lines in judging probably. And the four judges in the FMBB, you know, I don't think that they, there is no manipulation at this point when they give the points. Right. Maybe before. Right. The only thing, it's very easy if I, if I take the points from all the others, you know, I can bring myself in a good light. You know, I can give the highest points because I know exactly they will cut my result off. I give the lowest points. You know, that's what I can do if I want, you know. Yeah, this is another, that's exactly the uh, a point I was going to make and, and you just hit it. I think, 
like I'm trying to put myself in the position of, of being one of the four judges on the field. And let's say it's my best friend competing. It is extremely hard to, to judge. And, and even when you try not to, it's very difficult for many reasons. And I think sometimes may, maybe one of the four judges is like, well, I'm going to give him 93 points when I should have given him 90, 90 or 91, but I'm going to give him a point or two more. But with the assumption that the other judges will give the right points and my points will get taken out, right? But then what happens when two judges decide to do that. Now it changes the game, the outcome. Um, I mean, 2015 was an a extreme example of how the Czechs handled the, the competition, you know? Yeah, um, they, that, that was one extreme I, I posted on Facebook and on Mia's post. And I said, I mean, at the end, Romy won, you know, but yeah. she just won because she just she went. Before. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because she would have no chance to win when they keep on cheating what they did before. Yes. And, you know, for, for trust, it's cheating. And now we have one judge cheating or not cheating, you know, that's so that's not that's not the solution, you know, one judge, two judges, three, four judges, that's not the solution. No? For me, we need critic. That's what I think. We need critics because, because it keeps it keeps the judge accountable. accountable. It's, it's like, like okay, okay, you're giving these points. Tell us how. Yeah. Right. And, and then you can follow. You can follow the line. So you see, okay, you know, maybe in obedience in the healing. Okay, maybe he, the the judge is not so crazy about super fancy healing style. Right. So you know exactly, okay, even this dog can make now full points in healing because the judges stay on his line. And, and so the, the small judges is not a solution for me. Very difficult problem. But um, I mean, there are a few things we talked about or we, you know, maybe you know, maybe it would be a solution like an obedience after each exercise, give the grade or give the points. Mm. So there is, you know, so, but for sure the points will go also lower than they are now out of this. You know? Because what I always think at the end, you check your score sheet and then you decide what you want to give the dog. You know? and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to make out of an 88, you make a 90 because you like it, the, the, the work of the dog overall, or you make out of a 90, 88. Right. If you make the points just right after the exercise, there is no chance for this, you know, great for the total picture. Hmm? And then you have, uh, going back to, okay, you're my friend and I happen to be the judge. If I have it to where it's, let's say, 94.5, I'm giving you 95. No, no question about it. Now, if you're not my friend, I'm giving you 94. And I think we can all live with that and understand that. I think this is, this is that's okay. But uh, making... I tell you, I mean, I know we've talked about this so many times, but like, let's take tracking, for example. I used to always go tracking and I always find the nicest grass and nicest, and, you know, training in these best conditions. And eventually I come to realize that's not going to happen. Like I, I start to look at the shitty spot on the field to where I'm going to lay my track because if I need to get ready, I really need to get ready. 
And like with martial arts, you know, you have UFC, boxing, whatever. It's like you leave it to the judges to decide or you knock the guy down and you win the fight. So when you, when you leave it to the judges, when you have so many mistakes that the judges have to decide for you, it's better that you focus on your training than continuing to blame the judges. Even if they are wrong, right? It's easy, knockout or non-knockout. <laughs> right, game over. And it's in your control. And, and I think we, if we focus on, well, let's make a routine without mistakes. Now when the judge fucks up, now, now how, how do you justify that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's... You mentioned something very interesting about the, the missed opportunity after a big competition such as World Championship, regardless if it's FMBB or anything, of, okay, let, let's justify the points. Let's keep, keep everybody to some level accountable. And, but I really don't think that, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was a very interesting competition. I loved it. And it's a very hard competition. Just being a competitor for so long. It's very different when you have four or five people trying, but then when it's just you and one more person in the championship and in the finals, I mean, you're, this is a, a extreme level of mental pressure on, on as a handler, right? Cause you know exactly who you need to beat and you know what needs to happen. And it's a whole, it's amazing. Um, but as a community, I think we are extremely quick to blame and find and look for, for reasons that are sometimes not there at all. And where, where, where do we go from here? Like we, we all want to have it a fair competition. We all are Especially not, I wouldn't say all of us, but there is people that you, that's all, that, that's your life. You sacrifice everything and that's what you do. And yes, just because you put so much time and so much effort and training and you sacrifices, that doesn't mean that, okay, well, here is your trophy. No, you still have to make it happen. Um, but there is a disconnect between the rules, a lot of the judges, and then the competitors themselves not knowing. Like I forget about the top five in a in a high level competition, but let's say anything under their training very hard they are putting everything in there to 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 do the best they can but they lack understanding of what they need to train what they need to show to the judge they think this is what i need to show but that's actually most of the time not what as a judge you want to see that's, for me, there is one main thing I really tried here in Germany, you know, over the German Working Block Commission, whatever, but I'm not sure if I have success, probably, or probably not, or not. I think we need another rule book. And we need another, so my idea, or not, it was, was not just mine, it was, I don't know, Michael Kötters from the BMC, we talked about this. 
And I think there is a big problem. We have the IGP-3. You know, mm. as, and we have IGP-3, and you know this like I do. We have the IGP-3 on club level, and we have the IGP-3 on world championship level. Yes, yes. yes. So for me, that's one one main step would be we need, and I always, it was not 100% clear written, but I, I spend a lot of time thinking and talking and write stuff down. So I said, we need another IGP program. And it's called, for me, it was called IGP C, like competition. Mm. So, and we said, okay, it's the same, like the same exercises like in IGP three, you know, there is no, so if you do IGP three with your dog, you can fulfill also easily the IGP competition. No. But, you know, so the exercises are clear defined, judging is stricter, DQ is faster, you know, like what I said, like, for example, obedience, you're not allowed to brace the dog in the IGP competition and all this different stuff, you know. Right. Uh, right. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, that's what I would really like to have in the future. Yeah, that, that could be something to look into. You know what, it, like... Uh, yeah, and then, you know, when we make this IGP competition, IGP three, you can educate the judges, you, you know, you, you, that's also a problem, at least in Germany, we have not so much than we used to have, but we still have a lot of judges. And sometimes you have the feeling, okay, this, this judge will now judge the national championship or whatever, just because he's, it's his time, you know, so, I, so, so like, yeah. Yes, and 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 so we can say, okay, we have educated judges just for this IGP competition. We have educated helpers just for this, yeah. and it would be more clear if you tell more the mistakes, you know. And then, like for example, there is just one additional command for out, you know. That's also, you know, a picture that the public does not want to see that the dog does not out, and then. People start yelling one, two, three times and still no out. Mm -hmm. So, and I think this would make it easier also to judge a competition mm -hmm. because it's clearer, you know, it's for sure at the end more difficult. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, good point. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, don't know. You know if, but I think this would be very easy to to install, you know, in the, in the, IGP rule book, that's not a big thing, you know. Yeah, and that, that actually, yeah, I mean, this can be, now I haven't thought of this, but that, that, uh, that can solve quite a bit of problems that we have with, with how we judge. Um, you know what, what you said way in the beginning of the conversation about um, the education of the judges, and I think the, the one part that's failing is it's not only about the points. There is much more, like like almost to the point that you need um, in in the judging camps somebody with a good knowledge of general animal animal behavior to to kind of it's like hey there is. Okay, yeah, the dog may have low tail or high tail. That's not necessarily immediate putting them in a certain category. You, you, there is much more that you need to educate yourself to learn about what the dog is expressing, how the dog, and, and even when you know it's not always easy to do, but I think this type of education is uh, uh, missing as, as presentation in, in those judging uh, uh, big meetings to where it's not, the, the very obvious ones, they're easy. Just like when I have a litter of puppies, I know which is the best one and I, will, I know which is the, but in the middle, what do we do there? Yeah, yeah, it's easy to charge 100 points. Right? <laughs> yeah, but it's, 
You know, that's what it, as a judge, if you want to educate yourself, it's, or if you want to get educated, you are self responsible. You know, you, there is nothing. No, and that's that's what I think when I think back to the good judges I I know. I mean, you you don't have to be the best handler as a to be a good judge. That was another thing. Yes. What I really think you have to be surrounded by good trainers. You know, it's like, for example, for me, one of the very best judges I know was Hans Rüdenauer. And what that means is you have to understand different styles of training. Yeah. Yes. Like, you know, like Hans Rüdenauer was, was for me the example. He come from, or we live very close in the same area. And then I did not know him anymore as a handler, but people told me he was a good handler back in the days. And he was also a good helper back in the days. But when I met him, he was already out of handling dogs training dogs and being helper. But yeah. Yeah, in every club training, he was there, you know, and in this club at this time, there were many good trainers. We had good Malinois, we had very good successful German Trevor. So there was a high level of training in this club. And, and Hans Rüdenauer was there, you know, and he watched the dogs and he, we talked. And then after training, we sit together and we talk about dogs. And he talked about dogs, you know, and, and, and that's what I think is you need, you don't have to be the best handler, whatever, but you need, you know, to be surrounded by good trainers that, you know, there are different ways, there are different dogs. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. and then that's what I think what is missing. We have judges and I am pretty sure even names in the very high level. They just step on training field the last 20 years for judging. That's yeah, what yeah. I think, you know, they, yeah. they travel all over the world and they go from one trial to the other and they just judge. They have a judging career, but they have no dog training career anymore. And that does not mean that you are train your dog, but you are in a dog training part. You know, that, no? And this, this is one thing which does not happen. So, and yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, shout out some names now, but I know some like this. For uh, sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I totally agree with the whole idea. Well, you haven't, you haven't trained a dog in 20 years. It's okay. It is okay. If you, if you can explain what you see and you have an eye and you, you're clearly can stay, you're not deviating, you're not like a roller coaster to where there is already 20 dogs who've given critiques and I cannot make sense what do you want to see. Now we have a big problem. Um, uh, you know another one that always kind of, yes, everybody wants high scores, but then you give 94 to some obedience performance, and then you give the 96 for an excellent performance, and now you have only two points difference, where it should be, it should be good at least eight points between. That makes you realize, hey, this is a different level. It's just clearly a different level. It's not that you're two points behind. It's not close. I mean, the, the grades are levels for sure, right? You know, for excellent, you need an excellent dog, excellent training and excellent showing. That, that's yes. a different level to a very good dog. Yes. And that's a totally different level to a good dog. Mm -hmm. So, but people just look for the points and then ah, two points and no, but it's a, it's another level, you know, at least, I mean, obedience and protection, you need an excellent dog to get an excellent. Hmm? And, tracking is and then sometimes we have to still come up to some collective decision. What are we doing? What is IGP? Is, is breeding qualities and genetic makeup, how much is important? 
how much the training and the, the gimmicks, the, the fake stuff is important. Or like, what are we, who are we, you know? Because um, as much as we say, well, it's a sport, what are we breeding? What are we selecting? Then it's left to search very few people that have experience and I, and maybe we can continue to preserve some breed, but you can train a dog in, so let's, let's take protection. You know, you can do whatever you want, but eventually a good helper can twitch that dog and you just see him growing, it's like, fuck that training, let's go. And yes, he can lose the points, but you appreciate that dog as, as a raw material at that point, right? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, IGP is no breeding selection. No, but, you know, I can use it for my breeding if I see. That's what I think, you know, it's not as, like we talk about the sport dogs and the breeding dogs, you can compete with both types. But if you watch with open eye, you see differences in the dogs, even if they have the same right. points, or maybe the one dog is, is slower in the points, you see. Yeah, so you can, for me, you can use IGP as your personal selection also for breeding. But, but, some, but some people have the, 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 the intuition and the long experience. Take how we were talking about the, the, the French ring, the cup where you went. It's like, oh, I like that dog. Even though you don't know the, anything about points in big details and whatever, but you know very well the type of dog that hits home. And somehow it's a really interesting point, but this is where judges, we kind of need them to, to also somehow say, well, but, and not, and I don't mean give extra points when points are not deserved, but, uh, but we, we need to point out somehow a raw genetic material in a competition. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm getting, yeah. It was easier 20 years back because you need strong dogs that they can handle all the pressure. Right, right. right. Yes. And they, they, they handle the pressure from the handlers, they handle the pressure from the decoys. And so it was a little bit easier and it, it was for sure more a, a question of quality than today because the dog training changed in a good way, you know. And, and so even with the average or low average dog, you can score high, 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 high points now, which is okay because we talk about sport. Right, right, right. right. But what, what I always think with, if you, especially if you are very close, if you are the judge, there is more than just, you know, watching, there's also a feeling in protection. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's yes. not just, okay, okay, barking, wow, 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 okay, excellent, now ah, full grip, nice transition, now out, Excellent. You know, there is more than this. No? And, and you can see, you know, but it's not the job to select in this for breeding in this, in this competition. Right. 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 Huh? It's kind of how, um, what were like that famous Mike Tyson saying, like everybody has a plan and until you get punched in the face and same with protection. Right, you can you can train, you can train, but then you get that stick hit, you get that eye contact from the helper, and now you bring the dog's raw nature, and you can see what do we have. Now we can balance how much training and how much quality, innate qualities we have, and this becomes more and more 
difficult for a judge to do. Yeah. Problem is also, I think, like we talk about protection, like the rules, you know, it must be equal for all, you know? So like the, the, the helpers must be equal for all. So they have to run from this point to this point, yeah, yeah. and then go back to this point and do this many steps for this, you know? And, and you know, we all talk about, yes, we need the serious dogs, we need the real dogs, and many people talk about this. And for sure, if we take a, a, a helper in a big competition who is not equal because now he knows exactly, okay, I make one step more or I tell me one more time and then the dog is gone. I'm sure the audience will kill you. Mm, mm. That kind of goes back to to how the DMC Kyorong was in the beginning to where you had more freedom to, because of that specific dog, to really evaluate it. But then people didn't understand that. They said, no, let's do everything the same. And now... Yeah, that was even on, the, on our clearing system. This was one of the main problems we had. Yeah, you worked my dog in another way than this dog. Right. right. Yes, because your dog was weak in this part. Exactly. Like exactly. Not, you know? And the, the other dog was, I, in the first second he bit the sleeve, I know exactly no matter what I will do now, he will stay. Yes. yes. And, and and yeah, people always you know cry for on for yeah we need this and this and this and we need strong dogs, but they all want to treat it, be treated equal in this situation. I I mean I can always shout out I want a very strong dog, you know? and I want to but I want to be the the helper should be equal to my, equal to my dog and to the others, and if he makes one step more I will kill him. That's 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 what people do, you know. And there is a big difference between what I say and what I want and what I really do. Yeah. Man, I don't know where do we go from here. I wish we somehow everybody sits down and counts down and we, we have a, we, we kind of clear some path forward because we, we really need that path forward. Like, like people need to, there is people that are having puppies right now that they're training puppies in a specific way without understanding the rules, without understanding what judges want. When the judges don't know, the judges contradicting each other. And oof, it, it, it's, it, it's so hard, but there's gotta be solution. Yeah, but, but first of all, we need a good rule book that's what i think you know and even with the exercise we we have now we have to describe them better we have to say what we exactly want then it must be logic like for example now they all talk about this divided exercises hmm? and that's not logic to me you know like take just take the the retrieve over the the middle jump mm. you know? so it's divided in five just for the dumbbell work and 2.5 for the jumps. No, but if my dog does not bring the dumbbell, it's it's minus 15. That's not logic. Right. right. You know, that's not logic. That's that's so they divide it in five, 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 but if, if it doesn't do one, it's 15. You know, or the same with, with, with down down and recall. You know, we have, you have five for the main part, which is downing, coming in front, and the rest is five for build up and whatever, you know, but if my dog does not do the down, it's minus five. That's also not logic. Right. right. Because I still have right. the recall and I have, you know, so. And you're leaving it now to individual judges to, 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 to make a, a, a decision how they want to go. And, and, man. I, I tell, I mean, for everybody that's listening, like I, you know, I think um, like my, my honest opinion of that, that FMBB was that, you know, the scores were, sl the scores were low because 
there was plenty of points in every performance to be taken out and you cannot not take those points out because if you if you tolerate and you give these higher points then you become it's becoming a christmas and and there is it changes what the competition is about really um so when when we say well the point should be much higher in this competition but when you watch the competition and this is the part that really sucks that we don't have videos but every time i watch a dog i mean there is there are so many big obvious points that are lost that you cannot give higher you should like if you give higher points it's it's wrong in all levels you know um but that's maybe a little bit the mentality you know of the handles and right. this is also for me you know like you know this 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 reaching for points i want to take highest point and huh? and this would also go back you know to do to this igp3 and igp competition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, right exactly okay i can make my 299 in igp3 they don't count much <laughs> no that's just 299 in a lower level judge competition no? and but on the one side i understand people that they want a point but like me if we compete in the same competition i want to be better than you you know yeah, yeah. i want to yeah. go in the first place and you can go in the second place that's that's our goal for sure you know and i don't care about the points you know I think it's important to have also um, how, I mean, the judges camp or whatever we call it, that needs to, that needs to get better. And I'm sure they're trying, but it has to get better. It's not just points, but also unless we find a way to reach to the competitors and say, hey, this is like what you're training right now. It's not what a judge wants to see. It's not what the rule books wants to see. You can make it really nice, but that's not what's about. And, and, you know, gosh, I mean, even like you have, you know, a primary and secondary part in, in each exercise, like there is some parts that have incredible value and there is parts that can have mistake but they are a different level of mistakes but right but most competitors when i say this most competitor this goes over their head they have no idea what i just said yeah 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 but but it's also it's not described in a proper way that's what i think you know right 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 and then like like what people you know yes, you, what you said it's not you train and it looks good to you and that, 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 that does not mean that you get the full points for it because you think that's what the judge wants to see <laughs> and that's not what the judge wants to see <laughs> but also what you train you remember this one video from this dog stand out of motion jumping right yes for sure it's funny but it's not correct you know right right I'm, I'm not even sure if the handler liked the way the dog did it, but <laughs> maybe he had no other chance than to accept, but, but that's not, yeah. I mean, I must understand if my dog will show this, I will lose points, no matter what the audience is saying and no matter how many people are clapping. Right. And on top of that, if, if for that trainer and that dog, that's the, the best option, go ahead. Go ahead, of course. But then but, you have to live with the points you deserve in this moment. Correct. Yeah. yeah, there are some ways, you know. I mean... And we, I think it's time to stop this... Um, okay, well, the Germans had their competition, they won. Now the Czechs have their competition, so they're gonna... Then it's the bell... Like, 
like at some point we need to level it, level it out and, and start to be all together as a community very fair to each other because we are all in the same, I don't think it's a fucking matter of a country and thing. Like, sure, yeah, I'm, I'm from United States or, yeah, but we're doing, we're all in the same thing. Like, like country and, and, oh, let's, let's use this as an advantage. We need to somehow at some point say, you know what, let's just try the best we can. And even when the host country, when, when somebody is hosting next year, they have to try harder to show, guys, it, we are trying very hard to be uh, 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 fair. Yeah, but I, I mean, uh, the fairness in the sport starts with the judges for sure. Right, right. You know, we can, we can be fair as we want as a handler or trainer, as long as we don't get a fair result. Right, right. You know, yeah. And what is amazing is there is so many. I mean, reading all sorts of posts, getting all sorts of private messages, and and sometimes I get judges, and they're like, "Oh yeah, this is so upsetting," and I'm thinking to myself, "Man, do I?" What happens if I actually directly tell you that you really fucked up a championship because you were one of those judges that you were extremely biased at some point? And, you know, we got to look at each other in yourself in the mirror and it's like, well, have I really been every time consistent and I didn't sure there is the competition and of course we go out we have a drink and it's like well I gave him 96 in tracking because I like him I'm like what the fuck why like why you can still like the guy I mean one thing is for sure if I judge if I judge and my friend or my enemy competes no? he gets exactly the points i want to give him in this situation no? and you know and after that there is no room for excuses you know because exactly he get the points i want to give him and the same is on the big competitions like take fmbb fci world championship whatever the judges, the most of them are deep enough in the sport. They know exactly, okay, like FCI, there are maybe 10, 15 people who can win. Right. And all the judges on the field know this 10 or 15 people before the competition starts. Of course. And maybe they know, don't know person, not personal, but they know by name. They know Ivan Balabanov is coming. He has a chance to win. And in this situation, you know, when you are on the field, you know, all points you get, the judge gives you by purpose. There is no accident happening. You know, right. accidents right. happens by, you know, some guy from, you know. Yes. No, number, number 87 and 92. Sure, okay, okay. That's one thing for sure. If you know, so nobody can tell me after big competitions, ah, this was an accident. That, that's a poor lie, nothing else, you know. And, and this is maybe something we have to find a system that we can tell this to a judge, you know. That's also one thing we talked about it, you know, after that maybe it's 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 one thing to make an evaluation after the competitions. Yeah. So for the judges. Yeah, yeah, for the judges. So you yes. come, you, so the, the competition finishes Sunday, closing ceremony is done. Next morning we meet again, there is a commission and the judge from tracking, obedience and protection, they have to come. And then we talk about some special things. Yeah. 
And then yeah. I'm sure if I if I'm an obvious cheater, you know, and I know exactly I have to prove my points again after competition. This makes me very uncomfortable. Hmm? Especially when you know that that's coming, right? Yes, that's coming, you know, when you know exactly, okay, the day after I have to do it again and help a commission, okay, that's why I did this. And they ask critical questions to me that that makes me very uncomfortable. Hmm? And maybe this keeps the one or the other judge away from cheating, I don't know. And but also you could use this to educate. And so my idea yes. is, okay, now we have the three judges from this year and Monday we make, you know, like evaluation, education, and we take the three judges from next year in the same group. You know, that's, that's maybe also one thing we could think about. Right? The only problem is who is in the commission. That's, that's always, always going to be, be a problem, problem too. too. Yeah, yes. true. And sure. for me, that's not a commission, you know, it's not necessary that there are just judges. Maybe right. we can find right. some good handler. Right. You know, successful trainers. Huh? Yeah, that, I think that was, that, that came quite a few times over the last years to where there should be uh, a, a competitor's kind of, committee that that interacts with the judges to some level too i think it it's not a bad idea at all yeah and this 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 does not happen right now with the um, rule book changing you know i'm sure that, that for sure there are judges they are both competitors and judges but i'm sure nobody asks the good competitors in their country about right well, ideas about new rules, whatever, you know, and, and, and it's not just the judge's responsibility, you know, what happens on the field, it's also the handle. Yes. yes. I mean, ultimately, it is for everything is for the handlers, right? Uh, and, and maybe that's also a thing that you should accept as a judge or as a helper, you are not the main person in the game, you know, you are just a service worker, you know, you are right. right there that right. this competition can take part and, you know, it can go on. You are not the main person. The main persons are the competitors and the dogs. And then there are the judges and the helpers. Right? And and this is also maybe a thing that which changed, I think, especially in the helpers. It changed a lot that there are many people, they just start a helper career and no dog training career. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's another... You know, and it's not that it's not possible. Like, no, it's, it's, it is. It's not the problem, but right. You know, you should you should always exact know the place you where you are, and right. you are not the main person. The main person is. It's not about you. It's not about you. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to go, we take you out and we place another one. Yeah, but if no competitors come, the ride is empty. And. Yeah, maybe that's, you know, all in this strategic education thing that, that, that we should think about that, you know, we are not yeah, overall as a judge. Mm -hmm. We are just there to watch the work and analyze and criticize and find the right ranking. That's our job. It's difficult. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there are chances, you know, to, to, to get better. Right. I mean, talking about the FMBB, especially now that, you know, kind of clearing my head talking with you. I mean, the one thing that clearly needs to change is let's just have IGP world championship. Let's, let's do that. And let's focus on not how many participants we're going to have, but how many of the top handlers in the world we can get in the competition. Because that's a big difference already. Then give the critiques, like give your points and justify your points. You can look at each other's score sheets, you can whatever, but 
tell me how you saw the performance. Because that's, go that's education on its own for, for somebody like, oh, I'm, I need to get ready for next year. What are they looking for? What? Because when they say, well, you got 93 points. Well, why? Now you're leaving it up to me to decide. And I might go off-road having very different ideas of why the 93 points came. And, and maybe it was just a long down, you know, exactly. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and you changed your whole system. <laughs> oh, fuck. Right. I mean, I think critique is important. And so we, I mean, for me, it's easy to talk about FNBB because I will have no Malinois anymore and I will never compete at FNBB. But I think even as a spectator, it's not interesting for me, these many dogs. That's what I think. And so critique is one thing, but with, for critique, we need more time. That means not more days because, I mean, you know exactly dog training and showing dogs is really a hobby with you need to spend a lot of time, a lot of money right. for right. it. No? And not everybody can afford, maybe you go to your breed world championship, then you go maybe if you have luck with the FCI world championship, then you get maybe to the national championship. No? So we don't need more days. It's already enough how much we have to spend in this. No? Very so true. We need critique. Right. This means less participants. No? And then I think we could found a solution, you know, what, what we talked in the beginning, that each country has minimum three and can go up to six, seven, or eight, depending on whatever we will find in this. Yeah. And and then the critique, and then the critique, like, I don't know how it is in the US, but in Germany, sometimes right now the critique lasts longer than the showing, uh, because they talk so much. The judge decides to give a mini seminar of how he would train something. Yes, and like, like for example, what I, what I always say, I don't want to critique what my dog was doing good. You know, so I don't want to critique like your dog was straight and focused in basic position. That's the first. I mean, I expect my dog to be straight and focused in basic position. Yeah. For me, it's necessary that they tell me, OK, he was maybe not straight and I did not see or he was not focused. Right, right. The critique is, I mean, of course, you need just like with dog training, you need to praise the dog. But unless you point out what needs to change, you're leaving it up to the handler to be like, oh, okay, well. You know, but, but you know, like, uh, it's not a negative critique, but tell me what my dog did not do good or what I did not do good. Maybe I did not count my paces or I did this as a handler or whatever, you know. That's important information. And if there is something you know, super extraordinary, then you can tell, oh, this was now, I don't know, the fastest recall I ever saw. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All the things there is no need to tell. That's what I think. And then you can also cut off the time of the critique if you do it like this again, like it was 15 years ago. Nobody talked about, you know, what was normal. I guess there is this, there is this thing about trying to attract more people to the sport. And, and I get that, and it is important. It, it's really important to attract, you know, young people. And our sport is competing with the present day of internet and, and, and everything else. So it's not easy to one, like I, um, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, maybe we do need that competition versus club level of uh, judging, as you're saying, because um, um, that that can be a, a better option. Uh, okay, yes, we can attract people, or but then there is the comp the real competition. This is this is like I I need to know what I need to do so I can come out next championship. You can attract the people in the basic, you know, in the clubs. You can say, right. oh, hey, it's easy. Right. 
this we can do bum 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 maybe also in the club in the igp one two three you know there is no no failure you know it's not that you need 220 points or 210 points to go in the next level maybe you can say okay yeah you need if you make this point, you can go from direct from one to two. If you make two times this point, you can go or whatever, you know. There, there is a lot of room to to make it more interesting for beginners. The right. normal beginner, right. he, will, he will not go buy a dog and, and he will not say, okay, I want to become the next world champion. That's not normal, you know. And many people don't want to anyway. No. Oh. And then you have the World Championship, which is the Champions League or the Super Bowl. Uh, and and that's a different level to them what I do. And I can accept it's a different level, but it's also, I know exactly just because the winner has 282 points and I had 295 in my club, right? There's still a big difference between this dog and this training and my dog and my training. Uh, yeah. And then I'm not disappointed yeah. if I get if I go on a normal lower level competition and I I end up with 241 no? because I know there is a difference in the in the in the competitions or in the rules and Man. Yeah. Man. there are yeah many things we can talk about or we can make and it more attractive well, well, outside. Right. And especially when we're talking world championship, you know, that like, like this top 50 people, they're, they're out of their mind. They're, they're exceptional. They will lose their wives or husbands. They will, they will fucking sacrifice anything to accomplish something. It's, it's like a lot, uh, it's it's incredible amount. And even the difference, as I keep saying, between being a world champion and being three times fifth place, even, even there, there is a difference that it's acknowledged because you get this title. And a lot of times the title doesn't again like i like personally i i have won two world championships i think not that i didn't deserve this or deserve but i think there were two other times in my career with different dogs that i was more i uh, more world championship if i can say that like that you know than than when i did it and it sucks to to be at the place where you know that you won and every not everybody but most of the people like hey you won but most of the people do they really understand or they're going by emotion and friendship and not understanding the rules this is where the education that we don't have as a community yeah and what we said it starts with the judges, you know, and and maybe it's also difficult for some judges. L let me say the the FNBB system, for example. That's also what I think. You know, now the last dog is coming off the competition, mm -hmm. and you know exactly. Okay, this dog needs. 95 to be the point and a half. Yeah. 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 Yes. Or 94 to be second. Huh? And you see this. I'm sure when we go back and watch different competitions, you know, like we have the FMBB system with the finals, but many times you have the last dog of the competition, like female in heat, or, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's the last dog, but he's still in the in the point or in the in the in the place to win the competition. And then you can see this many times, the judges stop judging in this situation. Right. They just right. think about world champion or no world champion. And it's really, you know, like in the FABB, if it's 
a close decision before. When you watch, it's always, always just one point at the end. Or the same is with the female in heat, so, you know. It's always one point or maybe two points maximum, you know. But but that's for me, that's they stop judging, you know. They said, okay, I know 96, world champion, 94, second place. So, so, huh? And then you don't even think about <sighs> 88 or 99, you know. You just think about these two points to make him win. Right, it, it goes, goes yeah. 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 And, and 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 that's not that's for me that's not cheating. That's maybe yeah, it's it's, it's also a pressure on you. Oh, it, it must be, be incredible. I don't want to be that judge, I can tell you that. Yeah. And and this also happens. So maybe the FBB system itself with the final at the end is not super perfect for for straight judging. Right. No, I mean it, it. It proved, yeah, it proved. In in since two thousand and ten, it proved plenty of times that four judges can still not. Uh, uh, they still can not uh, uh, give make make the the dog that and the team that is the better like it, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make difference it's unfortunate because logically you think okay yeah it should but it doesn't yeah yeah but maybe it's also because it's for some people too much pressure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also you know to make this comfortable or uncomfortable decision in one second you know this this also puts people under pressure so because it's not about how much point it's about world champion or not world champion yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting point and yeah so, so sometimes when we talk about cheating that's you know, our beginning topic. Yeah, sometimes there is cheating for sure. Yeah, I I can tell you examples. I know exactly this was cheating. You know, if you know the, the things behind, you know, like the, the, the story. story. Yes, yeah, of course. Part, the story behind and then, oh, okay, no. Huh? And, but also many times for me, there is the audience thinks it was cheating, but I think, no, it was just, you know, not obvious cheating, it was just maybe too much pressure, or maybe audience does not know what's the rule book, what's in the rule books and handles the, you know, that's, it's not, for sure there are judges, they cheat, I know, but there are also many judges, they are really not able to stay straight because they are not mentally good enough or not good enough educated or, yeah, they don't judge on this high level. They are not used to so many dogs on this high level or whatever. You know? So I think that this is where we have to, to start to take and renovate the system. Man, talking so much, it's an interesting conversation. I'm so happy to, to talk about this and we could have had this private phone call, but it's interesting for people to hear just a, a random thought. And I don't, like I cannot, hopefully it, it is clear that I'm not taking any sides. I, I'm just frustrated that we need to find a, a solution to this. Um, And I don't have it, and but I think conversations like this is what's gonna really make, uh, uh, hopefully, make a difference. That, that, yeah, it's it is very very hard to go by emotions, and I've been like again. I mean, I've I've done this sport for for forever. Like just looking at my things here. 
there's been ups and downs, there have been fair judgments, there have been unfair judgments, and we cannot avoid it. That, like, we cannot avoid that. But we can do better by, first of all, educating the judges and educating the handlers what they, what do we need to see? Because, and we probably need to come first of all to an agreement. What the fuck do we really want to see? And if, if we see it done this way and this way, it could be that both ways are okay. It, it, it's, it doesn't have to be only a certain way, right? That's, that's for me always in, in obedience, you know, like 100 points is not the maximum of dog training. Mm. You know, like talk about the dumbbells. Huh? To get 10 out of 10, <laughs> it's not a question about maximum speed. Right. right? Even Okay, we go back to Yanni's dogs. If the pickup would be perfect, we have this phenomenal speed and he will get 10 out of 10 points. Huh? But that's not required for 10 out of 10. Right. right. You know, then we go back to both dogs. We go back to Oli's dog. He has not the same speed, but the speed is fast enough. Right. right. You know, and he will get also. 10 out of 10 points for this exercise. <coughs> and this is, no? and this yeah. is maybe the thing, you know, that, that when you just compare one dog to the other, this does not give you the right picture about IGP, you know? Yeah. yeah. There is always yeah. a dog who is faster or, I don't know, more focused or faster in protection, but, but you know, 100 does not mean I need the fastest sit out of in the world or need the fastest dumbbell in the world. No? I can get full points in many different ways. You know? Because ultimately you need the, the clarity, the understanding what I'm, what I'm as a dog, what I need to do. Then the uh, um, You need the, uh, absolutely, you need the animation and the clarity. But the animation and clarity is not always judged by the speed. That's kind of what you're trying to say. And, and I think most of high-level competitors agree on that. But we are stuck in this thing about speed because the, the, how do I say this? The not so competent judges focus on the speed primarily. And then, of course, as a trainer, what do you do? You also focus on the speed primarily. Yes, yes. And then, yes, speed is a good example because with speed, you can make a wrong picture to the judge. Right. And, and on to top, to top this off, you can create speed by pressure and you can create speed, speed by positive motivation too. Right. right. Yeah. 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 But you focusing only on the speed as the, the, the main factor and, and that's not all. Uh, yes. And then, yeah, but that's, that's, yeah. That's, Speed is a good example, what I said, it's like the dumbbell is for me the perfect example. With high, high speed, you hide many mistakes at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you watch different obedience works and different on, on in competition, different obediences, and then there are these super high speed dumbbells. Huh? But there is almost no dog who makes nice presentation, you know, give the dumbbell away in a nice way and then can wait three seconds to go in basic position. Hmm? 
but with this type of world, usually you get more points than with a little bit uh, lack of speed, but technical perfect train. Right. And I prefer the technical perfect train stock for myself. That's also part of my training, but it does not work <laughs> with all my dogs. And but, <laughs> but in my training, that's for me more important, you know, that I, okay, my dog makes nice presentation and then I take the dumbbell and he waits and he, oh, then he has to go back and then he has to relax and wait. Yeah. But with speed, you can hide a little bit all the mistakes because at the end you get points. And that's where we need to, just like how you said, well, for you as a judge or for somebody else as a judge or me as a competitor and somebody else as a competitor. And this is where we, we really need to kind of all come together. It's like, okay, let's, let's hash this out. Let's, let's, let's discuss it. Let's have arguments and decide. And then bring it back to the dog training community so they know what to train um man it's so complicated i wish i wish we can sit down and have this like okay this, let's change it and let's make it better but i don't see how yeah i think you have to start in your own part you can do it like i mean like fmbb you are still part of fmbb or I think you still have influence over the AWMA and like now you, you, you saw Mia and, and Mia is a very yeah, important person in the FMBB in my opinion and she for has sure. a lot of influence, you know, and for sure she's one of the most known handlers with Malinois in the world and, you know, and she, she should have a, a very strong fan base behind her. And yeah, I think yeah, there is, there is, you know, the way to start. We, we will not change the general system at all. Huh? Yeah. yeah. But like, like we changed it in the DMC at the beginning for sure. That's what we said. We changed just our thing in the DMC, the German Malino Club. We, we start judging in a different way. We start, you know, doing helper world maybe in a different way. And in this small little, little group, I think we started a lot of changes we have now in the whole world. And yeah. I think the general yeah. thing is too big. And also it's probably the FCI is too big and, and the FCI is not very interested in, in, in working dog protection dogs. That's for sure. That 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 there is no question about that. That uh, um, they don't. I don't think they even care to to defend what we do in in a public in like. Um, yeah, FCI is a very strange one. Forget about like I have a whole different thing about FCI, especially with especially with how non-FCI countries compete, like me being from USA, like last year or two years ago, whenever the, the team wins the first place, but okay, we give it to the FCI country. It's like, what, what are we doing? Like really, just because there is the big politics and the money about making pedigrees and the fights, why do we need to submit to that machine and and not appreciate each other for our accomplishments like if i cannot imagine me being from some european country and somebody and i beat and somebody beats me from australia that is let i don't know if they are fci or no and then i'm the world champion i'll, I'll be like i'll be no like no I, I am not the world champion. And that was yeah, a very yes. strange thing for me too. I remember because I thought, oh, well, what happened now? But then, okay, USA is not member of FCI, but that's, yeah, that's, that's very strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you cannot win. 
No, I, I, I was just asking myself, or wondering, you know, what's about the FCI single world champion? Right. I mean, why, why you are FCI single world champion? If you are right, a member right. of FCI. Right. 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 So that was for me just so, okay. So why they take away the, the team title, huh? but they don't care about single or Fabian or when you know that's. Yeah. I would not be surprised if they got twenty years back and be like, oh yeah, let's maybe take now it. they will come because they did not think about. Maybe you get a call tomorrow. <laughs> right, right, and instead trying to think, well, how can we? keep this dog sport community together and not create these silly conflicts that have no reason on we have plenty of conflicts why fci cannot just say you know what this competition is not strictly an fci competition or or or, or come up with some rule but you cannot like it, it's the most ridiculous thing like i absolutely would be ashamed to get a trophy when i know that i got my ass kicked whatever the sport is i mean i mean this is like a, a mind-blowing it is so disrespectful for for like or you say you know what you guys are not allowed to compete here. But then don't call it world championship. Like make up, make up your mind, but what you're trying to do because of the ultimate politics of the FCI machine and trying, no, just because you're penalizing uh, American team or, or whatever team that's not FCI country, that's not gonna make AKC become FCI compliant. This is a whole different war. I mean, we need an organization, you know, for sure. But if the FCI is the right one, yeah, I don't think so. Because, but I understand also the, the, the side of FCI, you know, for the FCI board, the protection board is a problem child, not more. Right, right. 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 You know, because I mean, okay, now in, I don't know how the rest now in Germany, we have more problems with the animal abusive stuff law, animal protection law with the breeds, you know, like the, the, the Frenchies and whatever, you know. Huh? So they have problems in this part too, but at the end, it's, if there is always this discussion about dog training, it's most time about protection sport dog training. Huh? So if I would be the chief of FCI, I would try to get rid of this sport too. You know, it does not help me a yeah. lot. Like, yeah, yeah. Especially when you when you are running a business, which FCI is a business. Yes, and I, you see this at the WUSW. You know, even if the German Shepherd is a very successful and good sport dog, but the main money comes out of breeding. Uh, and and. This is not like 50 or 40 or 30 years ago that that the only reason to sell German Shepherds is the, the um, capability to work. You know, that's nobody <laughs> in the show line. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's really interested in IGP-3 titles. You know, it's, it's, for them it's a must and, and it's okay and they, they can do it. You know? But, but you know, the main part is breeding and not training and showing competitions. Pedigrees. Yes, pedigrees, and that's the same with FCI. So, so we are such a small part of FCI, you know, I think worldwide, I have no idea, all the IGP trainers worldwide in the FCI, I'm not sure if it's even 1% of the membership. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. For uh, no question. So, and so, what what would I would do if I have a amount of people under me and there's always one who causes me a pain in the ass? You know, I would kick him out. Or for sure, I would not support him. Huh? 
and and then that's yeah maybe that's also a reason you know that we yes we have we are in the middle you know there is the FCI main mm -hmm. and 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 all the the judges and the, all the the organizations you know they are in the middle level of FCI and the and the competitors are in the lower level of FCI you know so there is a so there is pressure from the lower level to the middle level and there is pressure from the high level to the to the middle level but pressure in the form that they do nothing for this level yeah, yeah. and yes i don't know if it's a chance to create an organization you know a worldwide organization for yeah working dogs whatever you know I, but yes because it's all of us understand how much work it entails to to form a new thing and and i mean there is you you need a, a serious manpower to to start something and then there is a the step you know between professional and, and non-professional and you, you see this now with with matthias working talk he, he sent me the information now why he why there are no videos from fmbb Yes. yes, he said, "Okay, the FNBB wants too much money from him, and you know, I mean, he's a businessman. He has to look. Yes. You know, it must be economical, okay for him. He said it, it was for him just not possible to fulfill what they want. So there are no videos, huh? and which I'm sure this is a very like I don't want to be in his shoes too because I don't know what I would do." Because I, you know, I mean, you know, there is the conflict between whatever FMBB and him and some individuals and whatever, you know, Edgar. But then I am sure he knew that making that decision hurt the whole IGP world at the same time. And, and these are the kind of decisions that you as a person, you have to make and, and that's what he decided and, and you gotta respect it to some ways. It's, it's his, you know. Yes, yes. But, you know, I, I believe it was a very personal decision, you know, from FMBB on the one side and and, but now I'm pretty sure, like, like entry off of this live stream. What do you think? How many people bought this live stream? I don't know. Not many. Cool. Yeah. 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 There were that, so many. It, it was difficult to find where you can get the, the live stream. I know. At all. Yeah. The yeah, crazy thing is, I, I, I bought it, it and, and I probably watched four. Maybe, maybe actually, actually three, three performances, performances during, during the, the championship. championship. And yeah. at, at the end, end I watched the, the Ori and, and Yanis perform. That's, That's all I did with the, keeping my fingers crossed that later I can go back and, and, and sit, sit down, down and, and have fun watching. And, and, and yeah. that, that was, was, that was really upsetting. That they would have made more money with working dog. Right. I mean, and, and I don't know the live stream, how many people, I don't know, not more than, I'm sure not more than thousand worldwide bought live stream. Probably, I agree. But this is also the, the, the big thing as we were talking way earlier in the conversation to where I mean, we can like each other and then we don't like each other. And maybe in 10 years, we are back to liking each other. But somehow, unless we all as a community start to maintain the, the focus on not destroying the, the bigger objection, the bigger goal of uh, what the community is, and still don't like each other and still 
make friends and make enemies and go back and forth, but, but somehow maintain this direction where we're going, because I don't know, maybe I'm too old now to where I, I didn't, there were times in my life I'm like, fuck that, you know, go away, we're done. And, but that's not the, the right way. And I'm not saying we have to be all friends. There's absolutely no reason for all of us to be friends. Like, why? Right? Yeah. Just, we watch all soccer, we are no friends, huh? <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly right. right. Yes. 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 So it, it takes, it takes, takes a couple, couple of weeks, weeks to cool down, down and get, get back, back to... Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I think you don't know the situation like it's in Europe right now because in 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 your country or in USA now it's it's also normal to make the sport as a professional true so, no? and uh, not as a professional handler but you know I, I know I, I mean many people in the in the United States live from dog, dog training. training yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely, absolutely. So since many, many years and in, in Europe, this first started, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe, and still not so many people do it. And, but there, there is still this, you know, ah, and, and, you know, these are professionals and, and, you know, there is this jealousy also yeah, yeah. behind yeah. it, you know, like, okay, he's professional dog trainer and he makes money and he has time the whole day to train and you know and the same as his working dog he makes money with dog training and videos and whatever yeah. and and if the board still exists in 20 years I'm sure this is not a topic anymore because mm -hmm. it will become also more and more professional or business side. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I, hope, I hope so. But you know what is interesting? Even in the States, even in the AWMA, the Malinois Club, you still have people, including in the executive board, where they genuinely dislike people that are professionals. Not, under, not understanding that for me to become professional, I, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm going to be professional and I'm going to just make a lot of money of dog training and I get to train. No, I'm actually really taking an incredible risk of what I'm going to have for dinner tomorrow because I've chosen to become a professional dog trainer. And and you have your nine to five job and you have secure income and secure pension and, and everything. And you are a hobbyist dog trainer. But I don't think we need to compare it like this. Everybody has a choice. And choosing to be a professional dog trainer, it has a lot of risk. It has a lot of it's not all rainbows and unicorns. You, you fucking don't, don't know when it's Sunday. You don't know when it's 8 p.m. You, you're in, you know, training dogs. And eventually it comes time to train your own dog and you're exhausted and you look at your dog ready to go and you're like, I, sorry, buddy, but can't do it today. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what people don't see. I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm professional dog trainer too, but you know, not 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 on my own. I'm I'm employer of the state. Huh? Right. right. So my job is to train dogs every day. You no, know, from yeah, eight to six or eight to four, whatever you know. So we train and train and train, and then this happens to me too. That I so sometimes I'm not in the best mood, you know, to train my own dog. But no? right. right, and 
yeah, but that, that's in, in, in Europe or, I mean, in Germany, I think it's, it's really, there is this jealousy, you know, still existing. Oh, this guy makes money. Right. right. Let's, let's squash him. <laughs> yes, whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully conversations like this, like instead of uh, constantly pointing fingers cause, and, and always be unhappy, I think it's good to point fingers, it's good to be unhappy, but we, we have to find ways to, to move forward from this. And, and I will say it again, it starts by, because I, I read so many comments, so many different Facebook and whatever social media things about this particular FMBB and, and a lot it's based on emotions, but mostly based on lack of understanding the rules. Yeah, yeah. I talked to Matthias a few years, months, I don't know, ago. Uh, about a webinar for Handler. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, like, the, like, like, like a judges meeting. Yes. yes. You know, okay, we do, like when we do a judges meeting, we watch different videos, and then you have one who moderates all the stuff, and he says, okay, look, people, this, this, and this, and this, this is acceptable behavior, this is not so good, you know. The, huh? That would be brilliant. Yeah, I think this would be a good idea, you know, for many. No, that, that would be not a good idea. This is like a must have to happen. Like, uh, uh, um, I mean, that's like out, out of everything we have talked about, that's probably where we need to start is. You can organize, we do. <laughs> yeah, because what, how, how does it work right now? You have the judges meeting and then the church from the country comes back and makes a presentation of their version of what the meeting was, which already is their own representation. And then there is handful of people that actually get that. And the majority of people that train dogs, they don't know any of it. They continue to do the wrong things because they think that's what the judge would really go, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> with bad luck at the next competition, they, they know what, you know, right, what happened. Right. But I, I would really, I, I think also the handlers, they should know, you know, what's good, no? what's point predicted, you know, what, what, what can I ded dedicate to this and this and this, what, no? I think this would be an interesting part to do. That would be, a, I, I hope you guys, I mean, I hope you get in that and, and I mean, this is like, it, it just makes sense. Like it, 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 like it has to happen. It has to happen because it will eliminate the conversation. Like right now, as I said, like I'm re re reading, all sorts of different posts on Facebook and, oh, I'm so upset and whatever, and we need fairness and we need to replace the judges. And it's like, do you know, how do you judge an exercise? And how, what categories and do, do you have any idea? You don't. So sit down and be quiet until you have something to say that that is a value. Yeah. Yes, but maybe we can try to create something like this. Go, Go for it. it. Yeah, that's, that's really a problem that many really good handlers don't know. Like, for example, until it's better now, but like, you know, healing. Huh? And, and for the most, Handlers healing was finished after healing. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That sit out of motion. <laughs> yes, very true. Yeah, and, 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 and really 
good handlers, you know, not beginners in a club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Good handlers, or yeah, there are so many examples like, you know, like good handlers don't know the rules or what, you know, the points, or but that's also a question because it's not described, you cannot read. You know, in the very old rule books, it was better. You had this this for the for the judges, this book and the rule book, so you could read both, and then you know more what, yeah, what yeah. they expect from you and your dog. It is interesting. Maybe you know, it's the time now for read. You know, maybe it's time for webinars, videos, whatever. Yes, very much so. That that's a brilliant idea. Very much so, because I, I mean, even, even a high level competitor, somehow intuitively, they can give a very close score to the total score, but they cannot say how that happened. And that's important. Yeah, the overall picture, you can look. Yes. yes, that's what we always call the the, the, the fence judges, you know. <laughs> I can stand at the fence, you know? <laughs> right. right? And then I look the dog, and overall, I look the dog, and I think oh, yeah, this was ninety-one. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's that's easy, you know. And the most times, I'm right. <laughs> yeah. And this is a very false feeling for for a competitor or anybody that trains, because you kind of know. Even though you are close to the score, or maybe you gave exactly the same score as a judge, you really don't understand how that happened. Yeah, um, but this was interesting for me when I was the head judge, or when, when I was judging at the DMC, and we start, you know, these judges uh, meetings in the club. So we judge different dogs, no? and then we had different values on mistakes. You right, know, right. Small group, right. five, six people, different values on some mistakes. But the overall value, we were pretty close. Most yeah, yeah. Know that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a good good place to move from. Yeah. Yeah. No. And and that, this is also you know what people don't know that that not not each judge has the same eye for this and for this, no? but in the overall they must be close. No? That's you know that's yeah I, I don't know how to explain, no? but yeah like like for me the sit out of motion maybe I could live with a little bit a slower sit than. Another touch, you know. Right. Right. But, but but therefore I want more, you know, focus or expression in, right. in the build up. Right. Yeah. And and there is at the end not so much difference in this. No? But but you know, all these different mistakes is not that's what, what's important that handlers know that this, this and this and this and this and this is not right. No? And this can cause, you know point detection, you know, that they say, okay, you do, your dog is doing this, this will may cost you points, your dog is doing this, this may cost you points. Yes. And it, it could cost points. It's not that, you know, it's with all judges the same. That's also one thing, but, but for high level, we should be in the same area at the end. Uh, high level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, man, it, it just... It, it, it puts us in such a crazy situations, you know, like uh, competitions and a judge decides to one's the winner, one's not the winner, and, and the one is your really close friend and you train together and you really believe that they should be the champion, but they are not, and this happens all the time. and. There is a way forward. I hope. I hope we 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 find that. 
hopefully this is useful for everybody what we are talking i don't know i mean we're just i don't i think there is some interesting points very actually valuable points and again like um I'm sure many people will, who do you think won, who was the real world champion? I, it's like, why would you put me in this place? I, I have my opinion, um, but that doesn't mean that that is the right opinion. That should be left to the judges and should be, um, you know, like we, we have to learn from what goes wrong and improve instead of okay well this went wrong this way now let's see what happens next year we may we're gonna make it wrong but it's gonna be benefiting this way it's like no that's we've done this for so many years that's not the right way to do it yeah 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 this must happen this cool man happen. i think we leave it here. I will be curious to hear like everybody's comments when, when we pause the podcast because uh, we can start some conversations and we can, we can lead some, you know, I know, I know people will agree and disagree with us and that's totally okay. That's, that's, it should be that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. You know, you should, be able to live with critique. That's what I think, you know. But the main thing is not to, not to get into the point, well, we got fucked. Let's now see how we can, no, let's see how we can really create what, like a, the, as, as the best possible option to be an honest competition, but educate ourselves first and then decide what we want instead of, oh, well, this judge or this competitor or the, like this, this is based on emotions. And I, I, and again, like I've, just as you, we, we have felt we've been on both sides at one point on another. Uh, it's part of competition too. You, you gotta kind of, you know, like it or not, you gotta, take the good and the bad of competition, any competition, right? Yes, but that's, I mean, that's, you know, like the critique and this and, and the, that was for me as a judge, I don't know, maybe I, I, for sure there were big mistakes in all my judging sometimes for sure. That's not, yeah. But you can believe or not, I really, I think I never cheated. I think right. right. Maybe people think different. I don't know. But I think I, I never cheated. I always try to do my best. But if my best was good enough, it's not my fault in this moment. You know, I try to give my best. You know, right. right. And if you it's criticize human. me for sure, you know, in the first second, when you tell me something and criticize me for sure, the first second, I'm high pressure. You know. Yeah. yeah. But. You know, after a <laughs> distance yeah. or time distance, I will come down and then, you know, and, and, and this should be possible, you know, to, to, to. It's not easy. It's not easy to be a judge. Like I, I mean, I, I got a license. I, I, this, I'm like, no, I, there is no way. Like I, I can't like it just, I can't. There is many competitors that could be judges, but they choose not to. So we, we have to appreciate the people that are taking that. Same with helpers. It's like, if you're gonna be a helper in a world championship, you're gonna have a certain amount of people that's gonna say that you suck. Like, no question. But as long as you, you, you prepare and you do the best you can, um, yeah. Right, 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 right. right. Maybe it's just not good enough, but then maybe it's not your fault. It's the 
fault of the people they choose you. Right. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, there's been plenty of times where you would have a helper that, oh yeah, let's put them on the back half, let them catch 120 crazy Malinois. Like, oh fuck. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Marcos, thank you, my man. Thank you for the conversation and um, looking forward to the next one. Hopefully, hopefully something more exciting we talk about than, than trying to s- resolve the, the IGP judging, you know. But I think that was very cool conversation. So thank you very much, man. Yeah, I enjoyed. So next time, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm.